Sri Lanka, considered by some to be the land of Buddha, is regarded by many to be a paradise island in South Asia. What you can witness here are the popular white sandy beaches which attract flocks of tourists year on year, areas inhabited by the majority Sinhalese. This island, according to the Sinhalese narrative, received the blessing and teachings of Buddha This is not all about Sri Lanka and its myths. This is also the land that continues to betray the teachings of Buddha and the basic tenets of Buddhism. In the northeast of Sri Lanka, the cultural landscape is completely different from the Singular areas. This traditional Tamil homeland has been under a brutal occupation for a very long time. Since May 2009, at the end of a bloody civil war, further military occupation and colonization of Tamil areas are taking place more rapidly than one can imagine. These videos show desolate landscapes of broken headless palm trees and destroyed and shelled homes. There is destruction everywhere in the midst of all the sorrow and tragedy. The soothing white statues of Lord Buddha and the triumphalist victory statues of the Sri Lankan army appears here and there. With Tamils, temple processions, in addition to being a religious event to worship God, is also an opportunity to unite in large numbers as a community. However, as you will notice here, the presence of the Sri Lankan army is hard to miss, with its soldiers easily outnumbering the Tamil civilians as a way of monitoring them and keeping this society in check. Nandi Lagoon and the surrounding land in northern Sri Lanka is now part of a growing war tourism industry. The Sinhalese come here in hundreds and thousands every week as tourists on tour, organized and hosted by the Sri Lankan army and government. The Singhala tourists are told about the success of the Sri Lankan army and their narratives of their victory. Yeah. 
But the lives and conditions of the brutalized Tamil population living in this area now are completely hidden and buried under the heading of war tourism. As a way of promoting war tourism, but more importantly, as a way of sending out a strong and offensive message to the Tamil population, the Sri Lankan government is waging a psychological war against the innocent Tamils, completely unmindful of their trauma and suffering. It will take many decades in order for the Tamils to recover from the devastating army offensive of 2009. The swimming pool, the training space, of the Sea Tigers, the home of its chief, Mr. Suse, and the forest home of the LTTE chief, Mr. Velupele Prabhakaran, are the proudest parts of the war tourism tour. Again, all part of this psychological war against the Tamils. Tamils to this very day continue to live in fear with the uncertainty of death knocking at their doors at any moment. Besides the high security zones and the occupation of land by the army, the colonization of Tamil areas is also taking place in the name of Buddha. This brutal onslaught against the Tamils has been waged by the Sri Lankan government and its defence forces under the leadership and guidance of the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Mr Mahinda Rajapaksa, the President of Sri Lanka. All the war monuments that are displayed in this area reveal this truth. There are inscriptions on monuments glorifying the leadership of government and the armed forces, and in particular, celebrating the role of the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Mahinda Rajapaksa. Wars have historically been waged throughout the world to occupy land, and this is no different in Sri Lanka. But the Sri Lankan government refuses to acknowledge and recognize the land rights and traditional homelands of the Tamils. Since the immemorial to the present era of the Vienna Resolution, there have been norms, rules and regulations governing the conduct of war. All these seem to have been blatantly violated in the case of Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan armed forces have committed several grave crimes against humanity. Their worst acts include systematic sexual abuse, torture and the murders of Tamil women during the brutal civil war. 
this continues even after May 2009. The world needs to take a serious look at the treatment of Tamil women in Sri Lanka. There are many more Isapriyas. Tamil women are no longer safe with the increasing militarization and presence of the Sri Lankan armed forces in the northeast of Sri Lanka. The martyr cemeteries no longer exist in the northeast of Sri Lanka. The war cemeteries of Tamil martyrs brought meaning to the present and to the memory of their past all over the world. In the northeast of Sri Lanka, there were more than 20 such martyrs cemeteries manned by the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Ulam, the LTTE, in places such as Kanagaburam, Viswamavadu, Mulan Kavil, in Trinkmali areas, Alankulam, Periyakulam, Upparu, and then in Patikalo, Kalladi, Mavadi, and in Ambare, and many more places. It is a well-known, respected tradition throughout the world to preserve and honour the memory of the dead. Today in Sri Lanka, all these martyr grave sites have been destroyed and converted into military camps. This is nothing but a way of humiliating the dead and the living. And more importantly, to deprive and deny the Tamil population of their right to mourn their loved ones, as well as pay their respects to their departed souls. Tamil culture respects and worships the dead in Sri Lanka. Today, the Sri Lankan government and its military holds no respect for anyone and this does not even spare the dead. In recent times, while exploring for water in the Mannar region, a mass grave of human bodies and bones were found in the area. There is further evidence that the Sri Lankan government has many more hidden mass graves of dead Tamils. This critical human rights concern may pose a crucial challenge to the Sri Lankan government in the coming days. The Sri Lankan government is also engaged in more notorious activities of burying the Tamils who were tortured in camps and later put to death after intensive inquiry. They were all buried near the martyr's cemeteries. This has been done primarily to escape further international inquiry, as well as to allow the government to abandon its responsibilities towards its own people and the international community. The colonization of the Tamil homeland and the demographic changes of the Northeast accelerated after the independence of Sri Lanka 
in 1948. But the pace and intensity of this colonization process has become even more rapid post-war with thousands of new Singhala settlements in the Northeast. This Singhalization process historically also included the disenfranchisement of the upcountry Tamils and the non-recognition of land rights. The Sri Lankan government today is doing the same thing with a similar attitude in the Northeast without any regard and respect to the traditional land rights, culture and lives of the Tamil people. We may recall here Garmini Disanayaka, a former minister in the J.R. Jayawardena's cabinet, who said that the Singhala settlement policy adopted by his government was in fact inspired by Israel's West Bank's policy, a policy regarded illegal by the International Court of Justice. This illegality remains true in the case of Sri Lanka as well. The LLRC, the Lessons Learnt and Reconciliation Commission, is a self-appointed inquiry process initiated by the Sri Lankan government due to international pressure. The 
LLRC, section 6.11, observes that the establishment of high security zones by the security forces resulted in displacement and loss of land. The largest land areas under high security zones were in the northern and eastern provinces. This observation comes from the LLRC, which is a self-appointed government process itself. More than 1,500 persons have filed re-petitions against unlawful land grabbing. This includes farm and private areas besides the annexation of land in the name of a high security zone. Despite the sheer scale and intensity of land grabbing organized by the Sri Lankan government itself, the Sri Lankan government minister, Mr. Douglas Devananda, continues to insist that there are no illegal camps or settlements in the northeast of Sri Lanka. But the truth is different. Tamils continue to lose their land even after losing everything else in 2009. They are increasingly relocated to internally displaced persons camps, known otherwise as IDP camps, in the northeast. Sampur and Chunnagam IDP camps are two examples out of many. The Sri Lankan armed forces and the government are also rapidly annexing land in the name of mine clearing projects. <laughs> The Sri Lankan government continues to restrict information about the status of the displaced Tamil civilians in the so-called mine clearance project areas almost five years on. In the Weli Oya region, formerly known as Manelare in Tamil, tens of thousands of Tamils were ethnically cleansed from their villages in the 1980s. This strategic region links the Tamil North and East. It is now said to be a high security zone according to the LLRC. Here, the Sri Lankan government has given permanent land rights to thousands of encroaching Sinhala colonists. On the one hand, the Sri Lankan government has been taking land away from Tamil people in the name of high security zones, and on the other hand, it is providing land access and rights to the Sinhalese from the south. This double standard of the Sri Lankan government and the authorities can be seen clearly in the Weli Oya region. It is clear 
that their true agenda is the signalization of the Tamil homeland. Tamil people have lost access and rights to their own land and forest areas in the northeast. The Sri Lankan government, since May 2009, has been building permanent houses for military personnel and their families in these forest areas. These military settlements in the northeast are taking place in the name of the War Heroes Housing Project. There is no scope for political dissent or democratic protest against this. The Sri Lankan government does not tolerate dissent. All this military presence is there and government is uh, totally dependent on the military and the defence section. And even recently, in many events that we participated, where we tried to organise campaigns to expose the uh, things that are happening, the government uh, troops and also uh, various uh, mobs organised by the government have come to attack us. In this manner, the democracy is uh, overruled in many areas and there is no way of campaigning against the government. The army responded to the LLRC by claiming to give alternative lands, but the truth is different. Many people are saying that they are not going to be able to do it. Paling kurang dulu, orang 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 gel muka beri lelai lam, pada ini orang 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 kurang jatuh mandu kau nanda. Pula, orang orang anda kahani kira pula mandu pula orang orang ranu mulu ke berapa berapa hilang. Yang dah ini orang orang pura orang orang itu lalu, orang 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 yang ada boleh tangi ringan di. Paling kurang dulu orang orang kalau miring, paling kurang air mikir pata beri, orang paling kurang dulu pula lelai pelik kira kudu kau nanda. Kaga, orang orang ada kudu tu potu berapa teringin jaga dulu beri lelai boleh ringan. Jadi, thoran tu bandu bandu orang orang ranu mati ke neri kira kudu tu nanda orang orang itu tangga tangga nanda. Kalau siapa ini orang orang Tapi pada mulai lelaku putih, orang orang ranu adikari kedar, ini ada kani. Ini, saya ini ada kani dan, ini adalah nan terin dan nan itu sulle. Ia, itu pakat itu lelaki kani, tidak mati. Ia, saya ini orang orang sonda kara itu kani, tidak itu sulle. Apa sahaja, pakat itu kita kadi kedar. Anda ada di ikalan dan ini. Saya ini pakat itu kita lelaki ikal. Ia, saya ini ada kani, tidak nan terikalan dan ini sahaja. Ia, ia adalah di pasar ini adalah. Kani yang vikiran dah, orang beli apa cerdik orang. Nah, ni nang kani vikir leh ni. Apa kani ki, ni dah agak berorod dulu kani kerja orang. Nah, engkau orang mandor pira balik mana kerja. Apa, nang jenan, ni nak hidup kita sama nang kani dah ada iran dah, nang berdua berdua la tangga. Apa ni ladi, kerana je dipo cendera kani tangga. Nah, ialah ada anggel lan terai ladi ni inja dah suruh orang mande. Apa nang jenan, ni nak inja suruh orang, ni nak berorod dah mila, ni nak hidup sama berorod mande. Apa kani teradi, nihgal ini saving anda. Dan, saya jenan kani nihgal teradi, saya court sudah am pon mande. Court sila, orang orang court sila, nihgal anggap orang ini jei lada beri anda sila. Saya kaya itu kumpul di jenan. Ayah nihgal ini kani yang wajib orang orang tu balik kita. Apa, orang orang itu orang orang tanda tanda, nihgal nimbadi ayerik kalam. Iba, iba sonda ur le, sonda naat dili, sonda ur le, sonda kiraamat dili. Orang orang buat orang illa am, orang orang nihgal orang orang agadi wal kadan wal dunia. Sonda naat, sonda ur le, nihgal agadi aga patrikam. Ina orang buat le, orang tu orang kama ilik pakat dili, orang buat orang nihgal orang wal ayak urut. Irakram, sonda buat le, hari orang irakram, nangal wara guru tu nengah kita buat le, irakram. Ini enak matra melale, enak pola, etniyo kurun bangal ni nengah kita beri anu perjanjian ni nengah. Barat mari kalam, barat mari pani ada orang kalam, tapi pula le, enak tu baca nangal, beran baca bal rende teri ada orang katana ni nilai lada nangal irakram. Keleng kalau kita kani teri bi kerai kemana orang ayah part orang, nangal rende bal don irakram. Keleng ni jile, nangal aru bodo bersa ma iran tu kani le, ranu mau ipa kuri irak. Anal, ada budak ram, nangal urusi pertama juli, ada orang hari sangat itu urusi kalau tidak orang orang itu hidup. Iden tu mahu orang orang itu khati urusi pertama itu pernah juga orang orang itu terlalu orang orang itu terlalu mana orang orang itu budak orang orang itu hidup dengan khati macam mana? Anak ini memang orang orang itu budak orang itu tidak ada. Anak ini memang orang orang itu budak orang itu tidak ada. Anak ini memang orang orang itu budak orang itu tidak ada. Anak ini memang orang orang itu budak orang itu tidak ada. Anak ini memang orang orang itu budak orang itu tidak ada. Anak ini memang orang orang itu budak orang itu tidak ada. Anak ini memang orang orang itu budak orang itu tidak ada. Anak ini memang orang orang itu budak orang itu tidak ada. Anak ini memang orang orang itu budak orang itu tidak ada. Anak ini memang orang orang itu budak orang itu tidak ada. Anak ini memang orang orang itu budak orang itu tidak ada. Anak ini memang orang orang itu budak orang itu tidak ada. Anak ini memang orang orang itu budak orang itu tidak ada. Anak ini memang orang orang itu budak orang itu tidak ada. Anak ini memang orang orang itu budak orang itu tidak ada. Anak ini memang orang orang itu budak orang itu
கொண்டு வச்சு அடக்கம் செய்ய கூடும் வந்து சொல்லியிருக்கிறேன் There are military camps all along the A9 road starting from Tandikulam in Vavunya to Kaitedi in Jaffna. 30 camps inhabit this long stretch of 140 kilometers. There are 29 military camps in the Karachi division. in the Kilinichi district there are 13 military camps in the Poonagari division of the Kilinichi district there are 20 military camps in the Mannar district this is how the structural genocide of Tamils in Sri Lanka is taking place Tamils are becoming minorities in their own ancestral lands. The loss of their lives, land and culture are all continuing. In this war without witnesses, the Sri Lankan government continues to maintain that it followed a zero civilian casualty policy. On the other hand, The Sri Lankan government accuses the LTTE of using the civilian population as human shields against the government fire. ஏறக்குறைய ஒரு லட்சத்தி அறுபத்தையாயிரம் சனத்தை இறுதி பொருள் நாங்கள் சந்திச்சுள்ளோம் அந்த இறுதி பொருள் கடைசி நேரமிடம் கூட எனது மனைவி தொண்ணூறாம் ஆண்டு புறம் அந்த புள்ளி ஒன்று கிபிர் ஸ்ரீலங்காவுடைய இராணுவத்தின்ற அதிகார பரவலாக்கப்பட்ட இராணுவ பாரிய நடவடிக்கையின் மூலம் இரண்டு பேரையும் இழந்துள்ளேன் முதல் <laughs> <laughs> பொதுசனம் <laughs> 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 நாங்கள் ஒன்றரை லட்சம் ஜனத்தில் 
We present here an exclusive interview, a personal confession given by a Sri Lankan soldier who played an active part in the ruthless military campaign against Tamils. Chemical pilbanda adhyayana kala e kala tamah pragit de dasate december maa se lanka vata phad kobya ke phad kobya dr kobya khela papi niyojite ka wa e ti vich rassi me di pragit me gana silum dena dhenu at kala e vagi ma kuda kanda yam dhenu at kala e lipi liwa e hamu ma khata kara e kala ekat ek pragit digin digita hoya gana e noa kale di tamah pragit देदास नवे अगस्त मासे फालेवे निमाता आवटे वाइट एंड हेकिंग गेन हिल्ला इट पहुँचें द प्रगित निदास कराने Orang ayam senam orang, senam. 
The confessions of this Sri Lankan soldier directly contradict the Sri Lankan government's statement on the 27th of April 2009 that their troops would no longer use heavy weapons or airstrikes and that they had not caused any civilian casualties. It also confirms the eyewitness accounts given by several Tamil victims of the continued usage of chemical weapons and kafir air attacks. There were kafir and MIG airstrikes, cluster bombs and multi-barrel rocket attacks employed by the Sri Lankan Army, Air Force and Navy. The Sri Lankan government brands all those who raise concern about the human rights violations of Tamils as supporters and sympathisers of the Tigers, the LTTE. Often, they are also accused of being bribed by the Tigers. What about the confessions of the earlier Sri Lankan soldier? The Sri Lankan government would of course say that he as well is a sympathiser of the LTTE or in fact may have been bribed by the LTTE. They may even locate this soldier in the future and pressurise him to publicly recant these honest confessions given to us on camera. But the truth is, in the name of counter-terrorism, the Sri Lankan government has virtually destroyed all basic tenets of democracy, law and order. It now pursues a policy of ruthless militarization and land grabs. The demographic changes that the Sri Lankan government has adopted since independence clearly resembles the Israeli government's policy towards the Palestinian people in terms of occupation of Palestinian land and its subsequent colonization by foreign settlers. Sri Lanka, using Israel's Palestinian policy as a model, is marching towards this final solution, which includes not only the elimination of any armed resistance, but also the wiping out of the entire Tamil population gradually and systematically. There is a complete death of democracy in Sri Lanka, with the near completion of its structural genocide of Tamils after over 65 years. Now it is time for the world to recognise the genocide of Tamils, which has continued unabated. Tamils of Sri Lanka await a political solution, a peaceful and negotiated political settlement through appropriate international mechanisms, including an independent international investigation for genocide and the intervention of the international community. When filming this land grabbed by the Navy, our director was spotted and chased, detained without charge. Search for justice is the way forward. During custody, 
he was offered petrol to drink instead of water. Due to international pressure, he was finally released and deported to his native land, India, on the evening of the 28th of December. The Sri Lankan government does not tolerate free media access and has killed over 48 journalists since 2004, 41 of them being Tamil. Tamils, who account for less than 12% of the total population, account for 87% of all journalists murdered by pro-government forces. <laughs> 